Hey guys, Scare9 here. Welcome back to my channel today. And recently, I have been absolutely just uh, non-stop talking about how much I love Beyond Light. And so I thought it was time to take a step back and to talk about something that I feel like could be quite drastically improved. And that is going to be the Triumph system. And uh, if you guys don't know, I just want to establish some credibility here. I'm not trying to flex. I'm not trying to be an elitist or anything, but um, I had maximum triumph score going into this DLC. I have every single title. I just want to say like, I am someone who cares deeply about this system. I spent a lot of time grinding triumphs. I plan to continue to do so. And uh, there's a couple of issues for specifically that I want to go ahead and bring up in this video and talk about. And so obviously the end goal is whoever at Bungie is in charge of the uh, player reward and progression system or whatever you would call this, uh, sees this video and, and gets some feedback. Because I've I've talked to uh, some people on Twitter, a lot of my friends, uh, really hardcore Triumph grinders. Because I mean, believe it or not, there are people that actually care about this. And there's, there's actually, it, it might only be a couple thousand or so, uh, but there's a there's a chunk of the community that really cares about this system and wants to see it flourish and, and wants it to get better And so uh, if you guys wouldn't mind sharing this video around and, and maybe we can catch someone at Bungie's attention That would be awesome. So uh, Let's just go ahead and talk about these four problems. The first one's a little nitpicky But as I mentioned, I had maximum triumph score going into uh, this this expansion at absolute max and for whatever reason when <laughs> all of these triumphs were retired and beyond light happened uh, They added score to a triumph that didn't have it and that's the day one crown of sorrow raid challenge and so uh, Currently, I think this is a bug. I'm not sure if they know about this, but this is the only day one triumph Including deep stone crypt all of them if you if you look at all of them They're all worth zero points and uh, for whatever reason this one is now worth 10 and it wasn't before And so you have all these people that have grinded for max triumph score and got screwed out of this because we didn't have Teams at the time or we didn't have friends that were as serious about it or for whatever reason I mean this was not a heavily completed raid on day one anyways So I think that's something that's worth noting probably is just a bug Hopefully it's fixed, but I do want to bring some attention to it now the main, the second point is my main one. And this is where I'm starting to get really kind of fed up with this system. And that is gonna be unnecessarily grindy triumphs. Some that are not, they're not impressive. They're not fun. Uh, and as I quite commonly like to say, it's just, it's honestly just sadistic. And so the one I'm talking about here is 50 wins while at legend in the competitive or survival playlist. And so I just want to break this down. So first off, it doesn't even take 50 wins to get to Legend, okay? And so they expect you to play for five Triumph points, not a single shader, not a single emblem, just to maintain maximum Triumph score. You are expected to play uh, at least 50 games at Legend. Now let's break this down. So if I, if I pull out a calculator uh, here, something simple. So... 50 wins is the, the minimum. Now, if you lose a game, you are set down to below legend. And so you have to win another game before you can get any progress towards this triumph again. So if you lose, you are at least two games extra because you have to not only, not only the game you lost, but you have to win again before you can win towards this. And so let's, you know, skill-based matchmaking is applied within the competitive playlist. So you ideally will win 50% of your games and you will lose 50% of your games because you are matching people at exactly your same skill level. I'm not even gonna talk about cheaters, right? If you run into a cheater, they just wasted an hour of your time. So if you're supposed to win 50% and lose 50%, um, that's 50 games that you've lost that don't count towards this. And then it's an additional 50 that you have to win to get back up to legend before you can win again. So we're talking about an average, ideal average in Bungie's eyes of 150 games. Let's say generously that every game takes 10 minutes. It's, it's gonna be longer than that. It's probably 15, but let's be generous and let's say 10. Um, and then, you know, divide that by uh, 60 minutes. So <laughs> Bungie's idea of a five point triumph uh, is 25 hours, right? And so I just think this was horribly balanced. 10 wins at Legend, sure. Reaching a Legend in the first place. Uh, maybe, I guess, even though that's technically a seal and we're gonna talk about that in a future point. Um, 
But this is silly. And the fact that this is a reoccurring triumph, this has been a triumph in, in previous seasons, but it's never been worth points. Uh, if this is put into the game next season, I'm not going for max triumph score anymore. I can tell you that. I'm going for it now, as you can see. Um, I'm going to do my best to get it. But I will not waste 25 hours plus of my time going for five triumph score. Uh, I, I really do care about maintaining triumph score, but this is not fun. This is not impressive. When I look at someone with this triumph, I'm like, why do you hate yourself? This is this is ridiculous. And I, I really want to see that uh, taken care of. And I really hope it's something that, that we don't see in the future. And I know a lot of my friends and people I've talked to and hardcore grinders of the game are stopping their, their pursuit of maximum triumph score because of this. This is just horrible. So I really hope that the, the, you know, with this video, we can reach someone that makes sure this never happens again, because it's it's awful. Now, I have two more points. Uh, one is one that I'm pretty passionate about myself, and it's the fact that you shouldn't have to redo Triumphs every season. And the two I'm going to talk about are Flawless and Conqueror. Oh, there's, this can reapply to pretty much any of these reoccurring seals. Win 10 Crucible matches every season, or uh, pretty much if you just go here, any any of these. I shouldn't have to do this every single season. Weekly drifty, Drifter Bounties, Rings Earned. I, I, no one wants to do this every season. This isn't, it's not a triumph to do this every season. You're, it's just like, you know, I shouldn't have to do that 80 times. You know, <laughs> we get it. I, I have to play Gambit. I, uh, it's not, I don't like those. But more importantly, I don't like the flawless ones. I have already done this. I have earned two flawless seals in the past. One, two. I already have them. No one's asking me to go earn Riven's Bane every season. Why the hell do I have to earn Flawless every season? And it, some of these are fine. Uh, win 10 games on a ticket that already have seven wins. Yeah, it's a waste of time. I'm not going to get rewarded for it, but at least I get a, a seal for a third time. That literally means nothing. Um, f go Flawless four weeks. I'm going to do that anyways. Uh, carry someone who's never been Flawless Flawless before. You have to do this every season? Really? Why? 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 What does this prove to anyone? Uh, do a confidence card. These things should not have to be done every single season. It should be on a lockout. And, and the game should look at it and be like, oh, he's earned flawless before. He, he has gotten the score for this. Now, in every subsequent season, it's going to be worth zero points. And this person can go for it if he wants to. Essentially, what I'm saying is have, you know, fall of season 11, 12, 13, 14. And the first time you earn one, it's worth 25 points. But every subsequent time, it's worth zero. And so that way, you're capping how many triumphs score that you can get from this thing. And you don't have to do it every single season. And you don't have to waste time when I, I don't want to be playing trials when I can be enjoying the new content. I can be running Deep Stone Crypt. I can be exploring Europa. I can be grinding out new triumphs. I don't want to have to spend time in the competitive playlist winning 50 games past legend. I don't want to spend time going for flawless for a third time just because I, I have an internal drive to pursue maximum triumph score. And so I really think that these things should be adjusted. The first time you're in flawless, you get all your points every subsequent time. You don't have to go for it. It's no longer tied to points on your account. Um, I think that's the perfect way to approach that. And then the fourth and final one, uh, this one's less important, but it has to do with raid seals. So uh, if you look at, like, if you want to compare Riven's Bane to, let's say, Descendant, uh, the one, the main difference is Descendant does not require a flawless raid. And I, I do not want to sound gatekeepy and I do not want to sound elitist because I, I absolutely believe I'm neither of those things. And it's not my intention to do either of those things. But I think that the raid titles are are should be the epitome of raid loot. If you are a regular player and, and you do some raids, the raid armor and the raid loot is, is your way of showing that off. It's like, hey, look what I have. That I, I was able to get this. Look how cool I look. Look how powerful these weapons are. Whereas, in my opinion, the title should be the absolute indication of mastery of a raid. You should see a descendant in the tower and be like, that guy absolutely knows what he's doing in Deep Stone Crypt. He knows all the ins and outs. He knows the mechanics. And I feel personally like a flawless raid is a big part of that. 
uh, of being able to flawless a raid shows that you and your team are, have meshed to a point that you understand the mechanics inside and out that you're able to execute all of them flawlessly especially in a raid like deep stone crypt where the ads don't really matter you know if you're talking about a raid like last wish the ads there are pretty dangerous you know you can in the shiro chi encounter you can get messed up by some knights uh or some phalanxes that are are, are you know killing you left and right and stuff but to me, when I look at a mechanic heavy raid like the Deep Stone Crypt and I see someone with a flawless raid, it's like, wow, that person and his team or her team, they have it together. They know what they're doing. They know the mechanics. They've learned it inside and out. And uh, I personally think that should be what we're looking for with these. I will say I love all of this. I love not only that you have to do the raid challenges, you know, once again, learning the raid inside and out, but you have these small little extra challenges for an, each encounter. I think that's super dope i think that's really cool really well done that started with garden i think where like with the stop hitting yourself challenge for enlightened um that stuff's really cool like you have these small little challenges that only hardcore players that only players who really want to push themselves to be the best players they can possibly be uh will go for and to show that they fully mastered the raid and they can manipulate these mechanics to benefit them and i i really feel like um, the raid seals do a really good job of indicating that, but I truly feel like flawless should be part of the raid seals. And, you know, I'm not saying all seals should be impossible to get. I think the seasonal ones, they're fine. If they're easier, they're like these general ones, like the Gambit seal, Wayfair, uh, Chronicler, these ones, they can be easy. That's fine. But I feel like raid seals are, they are indications that a team or a person has absolutely mastered a piece of end game content. And I feel like that's not truly representative of that until you've done a flawless raid. And that's just my personal two cents. So let me know what you guys think about these four points down in the comment section below. Sorry, this was a little bit longer and more of a rambly video, but to me, these are incredibly important points. And hopefully this feedback is passed on and at least taken into consideration. Um, I know I'm not the only person that feels like this. I, like I said, I've, I have a lot of friends that are max triumph score hunters and uh, a lot of them, actually every single person I've talked to agrees with me on all of these, as far as I'm aware. So uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. Once again, leave your opinions down in the comment section below. I know a lot of you guys aren't max triumph score hunters, but do you plan on starting in the future? Why or why not? I really like the inclusion of active versus lifetime triumph score. I think this was a really cool change, making it a lot more accessible, but I would like a couple more changes to be made. So. If you guys are interested in watching either two videos on screen, you can click their respective annotations to be taken to them. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure the giant version of my logo on screen to be subscribed for my awesome Destiny 2 videos and live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you in my next video.